good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We've been reading in the book of Revelation. Last time we read chapter 18. Now at the end of chapter 18, because 18 was about basically about the fall of Babylon. And here at the end there is a divine sentence on Babylon. And in Babylon was found the blood of the prophets and of saints, God's people, and of all those who have been slaughtered on the earth. And if you remember, um, I was looking at that and thinking, you know, really, Babylon seems to represent man's rebellion and stubbornness and uh, but basically rebellion against God, refusing to believe or follow God. That's what Babylon seems to represent, regardless of whether it's an actual city or just a spirit that um, we as human beings tend to have, and we have to fight against that. That's part of our old man. That's the way it seemed to be to me. Now, in Revelation chapter 19, I am reading in the Amplified Bible. After these things, I heard something like the great and mighty shout of a vast multitude in heaven, exclaiming, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory, splendor, majesty, and power, dominion, might belong to our God. Because his judgments are true and righteous, he has judged, convicted, and pronounced sentence on the great prostitute, idolatrous, who was corrupting and ruining and poisoning the earth with her adultery, idolatry, now, and this is in reference to Babylon, and he has imposed the penalty for the blood of his bondservants on her, and a second time they said, Hallelujah, her smoke shall ascend forever and ever. Then the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures also fell down and worshipped God who sits on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Then from the throne there came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you bondservants of his, you who fear him, the small, common, and the great distinguished. So in other words, everyone praise our God. Then I heard something like the shout of a vast multitude, and like the boom of many pounding waves, and like the roar of mighty peals of thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, the Omnipotent Ruler of all, reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy. Let us give him glory and honor, for the marriage of the Lamb has come at last, and his bride, the redeemed, has prepared herself. She has been permitted to dress in fine linen, dazzling, white, and clean, for the fine linen signifies the righteous acts of the saints, the ethical conduct, personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character of believers. Then the angel said to me, Right, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me further, These are the true and exact words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he stopped me and said to me, You must not, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and sisters who have and hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God alone, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy his life and teaching are the heart of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who was riding it is called Faithful and True, Trustworthy, Loyal, Incorruptible, Steady. And in righteousness he judges and wages war on the rebellious nations. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many royal crowns, and he has a name inscribed on him which no one knows or understands except himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, and the armies of heaven dressed in fine linen, dazzling white and clean, followed him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, his word, with which he may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he will tread the winepress of the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty, in judgment of the rebellious world. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name inscribed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw a single angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he shouted to all the birds that fly in mid-heaven, Come! Gather together for the great supper of God, 
so that you may feast on the flesh of kings, the flesh of commanders, the flesh of powerful and mighty men, the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all humanity, both free men and slaves, both small and great, in a complete conquest of evil. Then I saw the beast and the kings and political leaders of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who is mounted on the white horse and against his army. And the beast, Antichrist, was seized and overpowered, and with him the false prophet, who in his presence had performed amazing signs, by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast. And those who worshipped his image, these two were hurled alive in the lake of fire which blazes with brimstone. Now, I think I misread that just a little bit. I think the emphasis was slightly wrong, so hold on. And the beast was seized and overpowered, and with him the false prophet, who in his presence had performed signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two, meaning the beast and the false prophet, were hurled alive into the lake of fire, which blazes with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds fed ravenously and gorged themselves with their flesh. So this is like the final rebellion. This is the, the end of the beast and the false prophet. Which they would represent. To me they would represent Satan's power to deceive and to fool humanity and to fool people, which we know we know that does happen. We know a lot of people unfortunately are deceived into believing a lot of the a lot of the uh basically uh lies and wrong things that uh that are presented by by Satan and those who follow him. So so but here this does show that our Lord, you know, our Lord Jesus, that's who's on the horse, and the way he's the Word of God, and has the tongue, the, the the sword in his mouth. He is, you know, that is Jesus, that is our Lord. And he ends this very swiftly. This does not, this is not even really a battle or anything like that. He just ends it, and it's over. Now, realizing that um, I have nothing... Um, literal to attach this to because of what it is and the way it is. This is very, um, um, what's the word? Very representative, very, uh, it's a full of imagery. It's very, um, I can't think of the right word right now, so bear with me. But nonetheless, notice too that the other, that the, the bride it has been prepared and that's, that's the church. That should be all of us Christians. And if you're not, you know, if you're not a Christian, if you're not a part of the bride, then you want to be. That's what you want to do. You want to be a part of the bride so that we are, we are ready, you know, so that we conduct ourselves ethically with integrity, you know, and godly character and that we're ready for the time, for this time, for the, for the end time. I know this is very, um, like we said, very representative, and I'm not thinking of the right word still, but it's uh, it's not uh, as literal as you might like. It's a figurative thing, but um, nonetheless, there are things here that I think um, we can see that our Lord wins out, you know, in the end. And I think as we see in the next couple of chapters, we're going to see more of that, more of how things will be. And I, I think some things are literal. Um, some things we can take literally. Um, if we apply this about the bride to ourselves, making sure that we're prepared and we're ready, you know, that can be kind of a literal thing. It does not have to be looked upon um, as totally, you know, just a vision quest type of thing. But for us, literally, we should be prepared and we should, you know, be following the Lord so that we will be ready and so that we will be a part of, of his maybe be a part of his army riding out on uh white horses with him so that would be that would be something so and then notice that uh, the people who are against god it doesn't matter if they're great or small or whatever they're just they're all 
they're all wiped out. He's given them, at this point, you have to remember through what we've read in Revelation, at this point he's given them all these chances and opportunities, even an angel with the um, with the gospel came and proclaimed, and you know he's given them all these opportunities to repent, and at this point they have not; they have, they have refused. So, all right, <clears throat> that is Revelation chapter nineteen. I want to thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.